Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCIE and creator of the Network Plus Complete Video Course. And in this video, you're going to learn the characteristics of some foundational protocols critical, not just for the real world, but also for your CompTIA Network Plus studies. Stay tuned. Now that we've talked about a couple of protocol reference models, let's take a look at some specific protocols, popular protocols, that fit into those reference models. Consider the OSI model, the seven layer model, and let's focus in on the network layer and the transport layer. We've got some very popular protocols that live at those layers. Now, if this were the DOD model, remember the network layer would instead be called the internet layer, but the transport layer would still be called the transport layer. But let's zoom in on the network layer. A couple of the popular protocols we find at the network layer are IP, internet protocol, and ICMP, internet control message protocol. And here's the way I want you to think of IP. Think of IP much like a flatbed truck as a metaphor. This is going to be able to carry upper layer protocols, such as UDP, user datagram protocol at layer four, and TCP, transmission control protocol, also residing at layer four. IP can encapsulate those protocols and send them across the network. They're gonna be sent via IP. And later on in these videos, we're gonna get much more in depth into IP. We're going to contrast IP version four and IP version six and see how IP addressing works. But for now, understand that IP is a layer three protocol and a piece of hardware that lives at layer three is a router. A router can make a forwarding decision based on a layer three address, like an IP address. Also at layer three, we've got ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol. A really common use for ICMP is to do something called a ping. A ping can allow us to determine if our network device has reachability to another network device, maybe on our network or out on the internet somewhere. Consider this basic topology. We've got a PC connected into a switch, and by the way, a basic ethernet switch is a layer two device. It makes forwarding decisions based on physical addressing. Inside of the PC, we have a network interface card, and it's got a physical address called a MAC address. And that router, which is also connecting into the switch, that port on that router, it has a MAC address. And the switch learns which MAC addresses are connected to which ports. And that's how it knows how to forward traffic. And the router down at the bottom, that's a layer three device. It can make a forwarding decision based on an IP address as an example. But back to our discussion of ICMP, let's say that the PC is not getting out on the internet. One of the most basic things we do when it comes to troubleshooting is to determine, can we get to our next top router? The router that gets me to everybody else on the internet, can I at least reach that router? And we could use a utility built into most operating systems called a ping. It's going to determine whether or not I can reach, in this example, that router. And a ping uses a couple of ICMP messages. The PC is going to send out an ICMP echo request to that router's IP address. And if the router receives that, it's going to let the PC know that it was successfully received, and it's gonna send back in response to that ICMP echo request, an ICMP echo reply. And the PC is going to display on the screen that we were successful. And it's gonna show the round trip time. How long did it take to get this packet from the PC to the router back to the PC? That can be very valuable when it comes to troubleshooting. In fact, let's go ahead and do a demonstration of a ping and the operating system that I'm using at the moment is Mac OS X, and I'm going to do a ping to my next hop router, my default gateway it's sometimes called, the device that gets me out to the rest of the network. And I'm gonna ping 192.168.1.1, and we see that we are successful. I'm sending these 64 byte ICMP echo request messages. You can see the reference to ICMP here. I'm sending out ICMP echo requests and I'm receiving ICMP echo replies. And it tells me for each ping that I'm doing, how long does it take? Look at this, all of these are taking less than one millisecond. That's a fairly quick round trip time. And it's because my next top router is on my local LAN network. Now let's move up to layer four. Let's move up to the transport layer. A couple of the major protocols that we have at layer four are UDP, user datagram protocol, and TCP, transmission control protocol. One of the distinguishing characteristics of these protocols has to do with their reliability. UDP is not considered to be reliable. We send a UDP segment, that's what we call a unit of data at layer four, it's called a segment. We send a UDP segment and we hope it gets to its destination, 
but we have no guarantee that it got to its destination. There's no acknowledgement coming back from the far side. That might not sound good, but actually there are times when UDP is preferable to TCP. For example, if you have a voice over IP network, Maybe you have a phone similar to the one we see here on screen and it has an Ethernet connection in the back and you're able to send your voice conversation over an IP network. Well, your voice is being carried via UDP because if we were to use TCP, that would be extra overhead. The header is much larger than the header we find on a UDP segment. And while TCP is reliable, it's called connection oriented because we set up a connection and it can detect if we drop a segment you probably would not want to retransmit a dropped segment in a voice call. It might arrive out of order. It might cause too much delay in your voice conversation. No, UDP is the way to go with voice over IP. However, for many data applications, we do want to use TCP. We want to set up this connection between the two parties involved in the conversation, and then we can start exchanging data back and forth and receiving an acknowledgement when we send the other party some data to make sure that they really got it. And I said that TCP is going to set up a connection. There's a three-way handshake that we go through to set up a TCP connection. And as a metaphor, I thought it might be fun to go out in my backyard and uh, toss a ball around a little bit with one of my daughters to illustrate this three-way handshake used by TCP. A TCP session is set up using something called a three-way handshake. And the metaphor that I often offer to my students is that of throwing a ball back and forth. So I'm in my backyard right now with my daughter Sabrina and we're gonna simulate for you the setup of a TCP session. In step one, I'm gonna send her an SYN, a synchronization message to say, let's set up a session. Now, Sabrina needs to do a couple of things. She needs to acknowledge that she received the synchronization message, and she needs to send me a send message of her own. Now, all I have to do is to respond to that synchronization message. Now we've got our TCP session set up. And one of the cool things about a TCP session is that once we get it set up, we can send varying amounts of data before expecting an acknowledgement. That's something called TCP windowing. When we talk about TCP's sliding window, we're talking about the ability of TCP to vary the amount of data that a sender sends to a receiver before expecting an acknowledgement from that receiver. If we were on a highly reliable network, it would be more efficient to send more data at one time before expecting an acknowledgement. Because think about it, if I'm sending data and then waiting to get an acknowledgement, that's time spent waiting that I could have been sending more data. We know that TCP is reliable, and we love that about TCP, but on a reliable network, it would be more efficient to have a larger window size usually because we'll spend less time waiting. And TCP can try to exponentially grow that window size. As an example, consider this laptop on screen. It wants to send data to the server on screen, and it's going to begin with a window size of one, one segment. It sends segment number one to the server, and the server acknowledges that, and in the acknowledgement, the server is requesting the next segment number. It's going to say, acknowledge two. I'm ready for segment number two, it's saying. But because that was successful, we sent one segment, it was acknowledged, we're going to double that now. We're going to send two segments. The laptop is now going to send segments two and three. They are received successfully, and the server responds with an acknowledgement saying, send me segment number four. And yet again, we're going to double the window size. We went from a window size of one up to two. Now we're going to double it again. We're going to have a window size of four. We're going to send segments four, five, six, and seven, after which the server is going to respond with an acknowledgement asking for segment number eight. However, what happens if we do not receive an acknowledgement? In a case like that, the sender realizes that it's sending too aggressively. Maybe a packet was dropped, or maybe we just had to wait too long before we received that acknowledgement. The sender is going to drop its window size back down, and then it's going to grow more cautiously. And that's a look at four protocols that we're going to encounter over and over again in our networking studies. A couple at layer 3, IP and ICMP, and a couple at layer 4, UDP and TCP. If you want to learn even more technologies found in the CompTIA Network Plus exam, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.